and all the other things that God went, went along with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had one of them weeks. I had one of them weeks that it didn't take me back, but it took me forward. It took me leaps and bounds, and I'm thinking to myself, thank you, Jesus. It's one of those times when you say, yes, thank you, Jesus, and you mean it. It ain't one of those you're just rolling off your tongue. It's, it's your saying with every thank you. It's almost like when you're saying thank you, it's squeezing stuff. And when I mean, I'm talking the good juices out of it, okay? Squeezing all the good juices out of it. And it's just all that, all that dew just kind of running down on you. And you'll say, man, you're just out there. I know I am. Please leave me there. Please leave me there. Oh, hallelujah. But if you have your Bibles, 2 Peter 1 and 1. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Peter 1 and 1, it says, Simon Hallelujah. Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Right when it said be multiplied unto you, that means there's levels. That means there's greater than what you're experiencing. Be multiplied. I'm not real good about math, but that multiplication stuff was a whole lot better than just adding. Because when you're multiplying, something times something, man, that number just you get where I'm going with this. But grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our of and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are we given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature so there is there is a divine nature look at your neighbor and say there's a divine nature okay not the nature you're born with it's a divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through the lust and beside this giving all diligence adding to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to your knowledge temperance and to your temperance patience Anybody ever climb a ladder? And, and in order to get to that one rung that's way up there, there's steps that you need to take to obtain something, right? And it's almost like he's breaking something down right here. And beside this, giving all diligence, adding to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to your knowledge temperance and to your temperance patience and your patience godliness and to your godliness brotherly kindness and to your brotherly kindness charity. And almost like the pinnacle is love. Almost it's that, like that top rung, but you're saying, wow, I just want to love like Jesus loves. <laughs> Try not to skip too many rungs in between here and there because it's going to help you. Anybody ever fall off a ladder? It's not a good experience. <laughs> not at all. But verse 8, for if these things be in you and abound, wow. yes. they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, you are so kind and merciful. I appreciate you today. I appreciate the birth before we even hear the child come out. I'm so thankful for the birth that has already taken place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The message titled today, okay, I hear nets breaking. I hear nets breaking. Okay? So Thursday, there was a word that was spoke to me. I was walking through the Islet 3 building on the first floor, getting ready to go to the shop, and he spoke this one word to me and said, precious. So I go in the shop and I write it down. Because I, I still believe, and this is the part that's just kind of crazy, that the sheep will hear his voice. I know it, we're in a day and age right now where there's so much communication via phones, via whatever, via whatever. I can't even tell you how many ways there is to communicate with somebody. Mm. There's a lot. 
But I'm still in the day and age of believing that he knows how to talk to the sheep if he wants to. Yes, sir. And so he says the word precious in my mind. So I go and I write down precious and it finds out that there's 77 times the word precious is actually used in the Bible. 61 in the Old Testament, 16 in the New Testament. But the definition in the Old Testament is choice of excellent things. Or in the New Testament, costly. Very expensive. Say that to your neighbor, very expensive. Okay. Now draw out that very. Very expensive. There you go. There you go. So then Friday morning comes. And folks, in case I lose it during this message, see, I got to live this. Now I get to preach it. But it's almost going to be living it again, okay? And, and Friday took me back to February 26, 1994, and even a little bit beyond that. Well, that was the day I got the Holy Ghost. So anyhow, I wake up Friday, because on Thursday, J.R. May brings in, that's a guy I work with, he brings in a baby bottle. And he brings in a baby bottle, and... Uh, He brings in a baby bottle, and you're supposed to put coins in it for the New Life Pregnancy Center place, okay? It's a donation thing. So his, his church, Salem Baptist, they, they do that. They hand out the empty baby bottles, and they give them to people to fill with change, and it just kind of helps them, you know, with new moms and all that kind of good stuff. I think it's a worthy cause. Hey, <laughs> I remember the first time we had our first child. They, they can give you all the books they want with that. And they can try to give you directions on how to care for this child. But it's a whole new, it's a whole new animal, you know. So anyway, Friday morning comes and I, I wake up. Because I've already told Jay, I says, hey, bring one of those bottles in. And he, I think he did on Thursday, so I got to see the bottle. So I says, bring one of those in, I'll fill that up for you. Because see, I've got this, which at that time was completely full. It's just a little pencil thing. And see, in maintenance, I come home and I, I empty out the pockets. Empty out the pockets, scoop her off, put her in the change thing. So this is sitting back behind my computer. You walk in my room, you wouldn't even see it. You wouldn't be tempted to take something that's not yours, right? Okay. So I wake up 4 o'clock Friday morning, and all of a sudden the Lord says, get that change for JR. I thought, okay. I ain't even hardly dressed yet, you know. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, the change must be important or something like that. So I take that change, and I want you to imagine with me, this is full, okay? I'm going to put this down just for a second here. Of course, that bag, it's, it's full. Plus, I have a whole other bag, it's just pennies, okay? So I've got a lot of silver in there and all kinds of stuff, but see, I, I noticed when I filled it up, there's, there's one of my little work earplugs, okay? It's supposed to have a string on it, and I, I, I'm pretty sure they don't need that in their baby bottle. So I take that out of there. And then I notice that there's, and I mean the bag's full of change. And there's a little nut there and a little washer, and there's something else. So the, the bag is sitting there just like that. And then all of a sudden I thought, well, there may be something on the other side that I still don't want to put in that baby bottle. So I pick up the whole thing over and I go. And when I did that, there's this big coin that's in my bag. It's an 1800 silver dollar piece. Now see, I don't know how when you clean out your pockets, okay? When you clean out your pockets, you kind of notice something that, that size right there, right? Okay? And I'm looking at that thing, and I'm, I'm kind of in what you call an awe. Anybody, anybody know what awe means? You ain't got words, right? So then I go to the computer because, see, I don't know about y'all, but I pray what they call financial miracles. Okay? So I go to the computer, and I want to know what the value of this thing is. Okay? In mint condition, uncirculated, it's 27000 Okay, in good shape, the thing is about thirty-five hundred to seven grand. Okay, I'm not even asking questions, but what I'm doing is, I'm holding on tight to something that's real. So 
just hope I didn't put that in there. You follow where I'm going with this? It's one thing for me to say, this is what God's done for you in your life, and then you show me and you have proof of it, okay? I'm holding proof now. And buddy, you, you, you just turned somebody loose in ADM's East Plant that has a miracle I can put in somebody else's hands. So here the journey begins. JR comes in that morning. I said, buddy, I said, I need you to sit down. I said, we're going to go on a little faith journey together. I said, you know how you talked about that little baby bottle and I'll just get, I'll, sometimes things are thrown into your path that are supposed to be there. Come on, so without me getting the baby bottle, you know, in my mind, I don't even go looking in this, do I? Okay. So now I've got something that's very real, real, real. And I, I can't even stop telling people. Matter of fact, I, I, this is what I do with them. Pastor, he'll, he'll work with me. I said, put out your hand. And then I start telling them the story, okay? I start telling them the story. I said, I want you to hold my miracle. I said, I don't want this miracle just for me. I want to share my miracle. I said, I want you to behold what wasn't in the can by me, okay? I want you to take a hold of something, okay, that I didn't put in there, okay? So then I, I took it from that group of people. I talked to 70 different people that day. You'll say, how much work do you get done? Not much. I went all the way over to Brother Anderson and Brother Maybon. Okay, they're way over by the truck dumps. I'm not even supposed to be in that department. But ask me, look at this face. Do I care? Because see, now I got, I'm holding a miracle. Okay? Sister Booker, when you get to hold a miracle, you know the, the, the first birth of a grandchild? And you're sitting there holding it and stuff like that. And you're, you're just looking it all over and saying, this is a miracle. This is awesome, okay? That's the way I was holding this coin was is it's like a new life has been given to me. God is showing me something that I've never seen before in my life, okay? So I go around to the next table. And I'm watching grown men tear up. Grown men. This is at work. Talking about what God has done for them. And they ain't never shared this story at all, okay? He said, you wouldn't believe. He said, by you sharing that, you don't know what God has done for me. And he'd rattle off. And then another person, because they was happy for my miracle. They got to hold my miracle. Every place that I went to, I put it in their hands. You know, do you mind? Okay. I said, I want you to hold on to that. I said, I don't, I said, I don't care if it's worth a million bucks. They said, aren't you afraid to let other people hold it? I said, oh, God, no. I said, because the blessing behind that is more than the monetary value of it. I said, I've got a hold of something that is so real, so genuine, and you can't take that away from me. Amen? So my day, my entire day, I'm floating, floating, floating from place to place. Okay? I go in the break room. And you know how the break room can be at times. There's a lot of people in there, a lot of unbelievers. <laughs> I walk in that break room. I'm, I'm talking to certain people. So you didn't put that in there. That's their big question. Everybody, you didn't put that. I said, as God is my life, I said, if I, I said, I want to die today if I'm telling you a lie. That's pretty serious stuff right there, okay? I said, let me die today if I'm telling you a lie. I said, but you all know me a long time, okay? It's one, it's one good thing to try to walk what you're talking by the assistance of Jesus Christ. I said, why would I make that story up? I said, I'm holding something. I don't even know what the value is. I said, but I'm definitely going to get it graded, okay? So I, I'm in the break room there. And in the break room, in comes this gentleman that I know has been fighting all kinds of surgeries, all kinds of everything. And I said, here we go. Because, see, I'm on a different faith plane right now. I'm on one of those my feet ain't even touching earth, okay? I looked right at him, and I said, you need a miracle. He says, I do. And I walked right over there. Didn't care who's looking. Hey, he done shifted me. I'm holding a miracle, okay? He done shifted me. I walk right over there, and I'm not going to mention the man's name for privacy reasons. Man, I laid my hands on him. I prayed for him. Didn't care who's looking. I had the, I had the faith that could move mountains. And I thought to myself, God, I said, if this could be my every day. Anybody ever remember when it was your every day? <laughs> Anybody remember when you got the Holy Ghost and you just wanted everybody else to get the Holy Ghost? 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to turn to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. And he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them because they was washing their nets. Amen? And he entered into a ship, one of the ships, which was of Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. We have taken nothing, not a zilch. Nevertheless, at thy word I'll let down the net. And this is something I just was put on me this morning. I wonder, because I know Jesus didn't make a mistake when he said let down the nets, and they let down one net. I wonder if he sent two nets full, and they tried to catch two nets full in one net. You know, because he, he always goes above and beyond. When, when he did the fishes and loaves, they carried five baskets. They gathered up five baskets. No, no, 12 baskets. It was 12 baskets of fragments, okay? So he don't just, he don't just send just enough. So there's an abundance there. And verse 6, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned to their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came, and they filled both ships that they began to sink. And they beckoned, excuse me, and when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at the Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I... I'm a sinful man, oh Lord. You know, I, I wonder what's going through his brains. He's seeing something he's never seen before. Fishermen, are, I, know, I know they're definitely superstitious, okay? But the last thing I would want to do is say, depart from me. I realize that darkness and light, they can't occupy the same space. But there's got to be something in you in order to say, depart from me, Jesus. I hope nobody under the sound of my voice has ever had that inkling to say, for just this season of my life, Lord, could you just depart from me? Could you let me do what I want to do without any repercussions? Could you just not mess with my plans this one time? Let's pray right now. Father, if there is somebody that has spiritually, they didn't, they didn't word it with their own lips, but they said it with their heart, depart from me. They don't know what they're saying, Lord. They, don't, they know not what they say or know not what they do, but I'm asking you, do not <laughs> depart from them. Wrap your arms so close and tight to them that they couldn't even hardly breathe their own breath if they wanted to. Let the breath that they breathe be the one you're giving them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. And when Simon, hallelujah, in verse 9, and when he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes that they had taken, and so was also James and John and the sons of Zebedee. So this is a miracle that just not Peter's involved in, but there, man, there's other fishermen involved. There's other people that have never seen this stuff before. They've never seen the nets break. They've had nets get snagged on the bottom, it even talks about mending your nets. But I can't even imagine the sound that those nets were making. And the eruption on top of the water. Can you imagine the eruption on top of the water? See, I used to, as a child, we would sane the creeks for crawdads and whatnot. And when you would start to lift that net up to the surface, and there's nothing for the fish to swim in anymore, all they know how to do is just flop and, and scurry about. Because they, they don't want anything to do with being up in the air. They want down in that water. So that water is boiling and erupting with fish. And the sound 
of those nets beginning to break because the miraculous was being funneled through their purpose. They, see, they thought their purpose was just catching fish. But it's when God says, you know what? I want you to do more than just an occupation. I want you to really be about my business. And all I want to do is remind you, allow you to have some faith, allow you to step out into areas you've never stepped in before. They had a day that they've never had before in their life. They've never heard the nets break like they were breaking that day. Matter of fact, I believe it even says here coming down that they had forsook all and they followed him. And you'll say, well, they were just lazy and didn't want to try to mend up them ripped up nets. <laughs> no. They got to behold something they had never seen before and it changed them. It didn't just change one person, it changed a whole boatload of people. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, when I had this coin on Friday, this came to mind, Matthew 17 and 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and saith, Doth not your master pay tribute? And he saith, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? I love this about Jesus without condemning him, without putting him down. Well, hey, what's on your mind, buddy? Hey, bro, what's on your mind? <laughs> of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? I love how he always takes a question to answer something really important in your life. And Peter saith unto him, of strangers... You know, this ain't a hard question. And Jesus saith unto him, then, then are the children free? Notwithstanding, least, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast in a hook and take up a fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. Now, it doesn't say anything after that about him going and fishing catching the fish or anything like it. It just stops right there. But this, while I was holding this coin, this is what he shared with me. That I believe when Peter caught that fish, his ears could hear the nets breaking again. Because it reminded him of a time to where a miracle was filtered through Peter and the other fishermen. It reminded him that this guy that I'm walking with has everything under control there isn't anything that escapes his attention nor his will or his way amen I wonder when the last time you might have heard or if you've ever heard the nets breaking because every time I was putting this in somebody's hand telling them to please would you hold my miracle would you be a part of my miracle today I cried so much on Friday it was unreal I didn't care. I did not care. I, I had JR come over. He put his hand on my shoulder. See, men don't do that. Men don't console other men like that on the workplace. We're cool. Okay? We, we don't want to step out of our comfort zone. And Jay had the, the wherewithal to say, you know, this guy, he, he's about to lose it. So he come over and put his hand on my shoulder and said, man, he said, it's going to be okay. Just, just enjoy this. Just enjoy this. Sometimes you've got to hear the nets breaking. And sometimes you've got to understand and, and, and be ushered into a place that you can even hear some nets breaking and see all them fish that come to the top and just boiling, the water boiling. Because somebody said, can you trust me? Can you put down your net after doing everything you knew to do all night long, Peter, could you just trust me? And so the story kept going on. Hallelujah. You sure you didn't put that in there, Billy? 
I didn't put that in there. But I'm, I'm really, now I'm in that vacillating mode. Do I keep it as something that reminds me of a miracle that took place in my life or do I use it to pay some much needed bills? <laughs> well, you know, you, if, if, if I didn't bring it to myself, it's, it's kind of amazing, isn't it? Okay? And not even knowing what the value of the silly thing is, I thought to myself, I hate to get rid of it. I'd, I'd almost, you know how we do. You don't want to idolize something, but you want to keep it close, you know. Put it in your pocket. Remind everybody of it, you know. But see, there, there's a gift that's in you and I that needs to be displayed every day. Okay? And it's much more valuable than this little coin right here. You'll say, well, that's $27,000, Brother Thornton. You know, in good, great, 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 great condition, uncirculated. But I, I just kept staring at this miracle. And I just kept letting, letting other people hold it. I, I told him, I told one guy one three times, I said, I want you to put it back in your hands. Because I knew that if it can, do, if it can change my life, what can it do in their hands? And I think God was doing all this just to show that the special gift that's in us, that sometimes we do take for granted. Amen? I'm that guy, man. <laughs> hey, Got the Holy Ghost February 26, 1994, and I was on fire for a while. So anyway, hallelujah. But the power was in his faith. And when he, in Matthew 10 and 1, and when he had called unto his, excuse me, called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. What he's doing is he's allowing them to enter into a day that they've never had before in their lives. He's putting something in their ability and in their hands called the faith of God, and that is going to change their course forever. Amen? Yeah. Now the names of the 12 apostles was Simon, who was called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Thomas, and Matthew, the publican, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and uh, Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. And these twelve, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Because, see, there's still one more step that needs to be covered before he yet goes to a cross. And that is that this word needs to get out to all those Pharisees and Sadducees and all those all those circumcised in the flesh, but ain't even close to being circumcised in the heart. Okay? But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is a hand. You know, i got, I got to believe this. I don't think that one has been lost yet. That same verse right now, I believe when every time I was putting this into somebody's hand, saying, I want you to be a part of my, my miracle. Jesus brought that into my life. Okay? I want you to be a part of something that he gave me. Anytime you've got a willingness to want to share a miracle like that, I think it really, really means something to God. Now, I didn't give it away. <laughs> I wanted them to hold it, but give it back. Hallelujah. 10 and 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats nor shoes nor staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And you know what he's telling them? He's telling them, with what power I've given you, I've got this. All your worries Leave, leave some place where you don't take them with you. Everything that you think is important enough to put in your pockets, leave it at home. Because you're going to experience a new day. You're going to step into my day. You're going to step into an eighth day where the miraculous takes place. And they got, they got a chance to do that. They got a chance to step into some really serious stuff. And they enjoyed they enjoyed and enjoyed and enjoyed that. Amen? But now we got to come to the truth of the matter. Are you ready? 
Anybody ever have disappointment in their life? John 21 and 4, And when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. And they cast therefore, and now there were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. And therefore that disciple that remembers the hearing of the ripping of those nets, even though the nets ain't ripping in this particular time, we need reminded from occasion to occasion who's really got us, who really takes care of us. And it says that therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat onto him, for he was naked. And when I come to that place of naked, I couldn't help but think about Adam and Eve. And when I was thinking about Adam and Eve, man, to go back to the place of where you just don't even recognize that you're naked. The only thing that you have to do all day long is to meet up with God and enjoy what he gave you. You don't have no condemnation. You don't have no sinful thoughts or sinful nature. And then all of a sudden, they lost that. And they, they wished. You don't know how bad they wished. They could just go back to the place of being naked and unashamed. So when I came across Peter there and it said that he was naked so he girt on his fisher's coat, I thought about that. I thought, you know, they lost something pretty precious that day. They lost a communication with something that they didn't even know. They didn't fully understand what they had, did they? But boy, once they lost it, they knew that they had lost something really, really special. Amen? Yes. Okay. And for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea, 21 and 8. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were 200 cubits, dragging the net with the fishes. And as soon as they were come to land, they saw the fire of the coals, and there, and, and the fish laid thereon, and the bread. And Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. And Simon Peter went up, and he drew the net to the land, full of the great fishes, 153. And if you want homework, figure out why it was exactly that 153. And for all, there were so many. Yet was the knot, the net broken. And here we come to the facts. And I'm going to close with this. I sent a picture of this coin to my son Stephen. And I said, you ain't going to believe what was in my little container this morning. He said, Dad, it's not real. He said, I bought commemoratives and that's $2.50. And I put it in there. And all the hope drained out of me and I wanted to believe. I wanted to believe this is real. Oh, you don't know how bad I wanted to believe that this is real. That could take care of some serious bills. I said, are you sure? The real thing weighs approximately 26.8 something grams. This weighs 23 grams. How you test it is, is you either go to a magnet, which this is brass, so brass is not magnetized. It might have a silver coating. It even sounded like the right thing. It just, it just, it just sounded like the right thing. He said, yeah, he said, I, I bought eight of them or nine of them, and I gave you one. See, the message God gave me was this. He said, the coin might be fake, but the faith was real. And he said, you know how that healed you? You didn't even have any more hatred in your heart for nobody. 
You didn't. You know how you went places that you wouldn't normally go? He said, I wanted to take you on a little faith journey. Sometimes God can use things that are so fake. That's a sea law moment. He can use something that is so fake but produce something so real in your life that you'll just be amazed. And you'll say, well, Brother Thornton, you got a lot of people you got to backtrack to. I've already texted most of them and let them know that it actually turned out to be a commemorative coin. It's not old and it's not real. It looks real close though. Almost genuine. Almost like the real thing. Okay? But see, how you really can tell the real thing is in the weighty matters. And you'll say, I wonder if I got the real thing. <laughs> because when the weighty matters come, the stuff that really matters, I wonder if we're, we're weighing the right amount on some stuff. I wonder if we're really composed of the right, <laughs> the right stuff, because this sure looks like silver, but it's brass. And so coming to a close and a sad disappointment. You know, when, when Christ got hung on a cross and got buried, I want you to imagine what the disciples thought about. It's already been prophesied that they're all going to forsake him. And they thought to themselves, you know, man, did, didn't our hearts burn within us? You know, did, didn't it stir us walking with this guy and now he's gone. And not understanding that he's told him the entire time, I'm going to be in the grave three days, but I'm going to rise up. But yet, something in between here and here didn't register. And that's why they're out there fishing again, Peter and the boys. Because something that looks so real sort of let them down. Let them down a little bit to where they thought to themselves, we thought this was the Messiah. We thought this was really the, the man that was going to deliver us. And then he shows up again. Restoring the hope. It's, it's that roller coaster of hope. You had high hopes. And then they got dashed. And then you get high hopes again, understanding that he used something so fake to move mountains in my life. I don't know if it ministered to you today. Stand with me, please. How can he take something so fake and let it minister so real? Sister Pope, I wish I could tell you where my feet was touching during that faith journey. You could have told me anything. Matter of fact, I, you know how you want to pray for everybody when you're on that faith high? Because you believe that you really are that involved in the prayer? You've got to have them sweaty hands or sweaty palms. You, you've got to be in the moment for God to use you. That getting in the moment so God can use you, that's about as fake as this point right here. But hearing his voice is the most real thing you'll ever come across. And that real voice, that genuine voice that says, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. Come unto me. Close your eyes right now and I want you just to hear these words that he says. Come unto me. All ye that are heavy laden, all ye that got more stuff you're carrying than what you need to, and all ye that thought, you know what? You can't use me, God, because... I can almost be as fake as it comes. I got news for you. Whether you're the genuine thing today, which I'm believing, or you're as fake as it comes, he's got a place for you inside his kingdom. He can use you like you've never been touched before in your life. I want you to really think about this message today. He can take you places in your faith if you'll just believe Him. And just as much as I believe that this was real 
and my hopes were dashed, I'm really believing that that faith that he elevated me to, I don't, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go down the rung of faith. I want to keep climbing and I want to touch every step, not skipping any, knowing it's adding to my journey, it's adding to my life. So even if he has to use something else in my life that is fake as fake gets, if it takes me to the next level of faith, bring it on, Lord. Bring it on, Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now. I appreciate you so much for allowing me to live this message, preach this message, and then get to live it again, dear God. I'm asking you to touch the hearts, the minds, and the souls right now of all those that are under the sound of my voice right now. We know the genuine thing. We've heard the genuine thing. Don't allow us to take anything fake and think that that fake thing right there is the real thing. Show your genuine trueness to us, dear God, as we, dear Lord, love and appreciate you. In this name, in your name, Jesus' name, amen. God richly bless you today. Hallelujah.